Nicholas Montez and you're watching my YouTube channel, Nicholas Montez. Welcome back to another YouTube channel video, everybody. I'm so excited to have y'all back here together again. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing the new Disney Plus original series, slash MCU Marvel series, Hawkeye. Um, this was the show that I was really excited for, and uh, because of all a bunch of great stuff. But before we start reviewing the first, and today we also we got the first two episodes to review, but before we do that. I think it's very clear that we kind of talk about why I was excited for it from the start. So for me, the I was excited. Uh, my thoughts going into this show was very interesting. Now, obviously, the Hawkeye character, he's had a mixed bag throughout the years. He was introduced in the first Thor, which I thought was a pretty cool addition. In the Avengers, I actually liked him because... After all that pain through, he went through with being controlled by Loki, he actually get, got to join the battle of the film, and it kind of gave him a pretty cool arc in the movie, though he didn't get awesome moments. Though he did get some cool moments. Uh, he, he Then he appeared in Age of Ultron, which you kind of find out that he has a family. In, and then he appears in Civil War, which I thought was pretty interesting, seeing him but on team up with Ant-Man, fight Black Widow, fight Black Panther. And then in Endgame, that's where you, like, kind of give him a full arc. But, like, that's the thing. Like, he doesn't really have a, a simple... He doesn't really have a journey that he's really going on. And so, I, that's kind of why I was excited for this show. Um, that you can actually give him a journey along those same lines. I think that the introduction of Kate Bishop and stuff is really interesting. As well as LARPing, Rogers, the musical, that stuff to be really interested with. Uh... Kind of, kind of making a different thing of pace, making it a little bit more lighthearted, and kind of making what, and kind of making stuff a little bit bigger while also setting up some stuff for the MCU. So I, I was very excited for this show when it was announced, and when the trailers were came out too. All right, so now we're gonna review the episodes, but I'm not gonna review them with good or bad. I'm just gonna review them and tell me, tell you my thoughts on them, and then I'm just gonna do my other things of these MCU premieres. So for me, I thought that this was a great episode for the, fir for the first episode of Hawkeye. It really kind of set me up for what I wanted to see for the next episode. And it set all the right notes between Clint Barton and Kate Bishop. Where Kate Bishop, we they spend a lot of time with her character, developing her, of how Hawkeye was the setup of her becoming a hero. And to me, that was a very cool inspiration of what, how they did that. Where it basically takes, where her becoming, a, her becoming a hero was because of Hawkeye in the first Avengers film. Of that moment where he swings from the building and then crashes into it. Like, that seems probably the most iconic scene in the entire Avengers movie. That sets up Kate Bishop's character. And so I thought that was a very cool thing, the way they set up her story. Along those same lines, it also just dives into Clint's character. And I like how he's a little bit more front and center in this film. I mean, in this project. And he basically opens up with his character, his family, watching Rogers the Musical. And honestly, this is something that I want to see happen in the MCU. Where we actually get to see this play come to Disney+. Plus, Kind of like how they did with Hamilton. But I want to see it like what they do with Hamilton. That's just my thing, but um, there's a lot of little references that are funny, uh, but Clint Barton, he just wants to spend time with his family. He, like, he's done saving the world. He's retired. He just wants to spend time with his family, and that's it. And also, one of the things I was actually um, thinking about going into the show was that we heard that Hawkeye was actually going to be deaf in this series, and I was thinking, 
is the attack of him is the stuff that that's going to happen with him and Yelena going to affect his hearing because like that's one way to do it if he blow if she blows up a bomb and then that affects his hearing forever but no he's been through a lot and he actually needs hearing aids like the first episode so i was not expecting that because he's been through many explosions uh so it makes sense in the way they did that um along those same lines i actually kind of like how it's this crime mystery where you need to find out who is that person and also the um kate kate's mom she's definitely someone that looks sus her stepdad definitely looks someone you want to punch in the face or at least i'm kind of happy that he is swordsman ah uh, so that's fun um and it was kind of nice to see kate bishop in the ronin suit even though she wasn't in it all that much but it was kind of fun to see her in the suit and also, this episode is also just very lighthearted. Like, it really is very Christmassy. So, that's really all my thoughts on this episode. Um, for the for the negatives, I guess you could say... The story wasn't really developed with the villains yet. But it's the first episode. Like, so we have four more episodes to go. But now I'll start talking about episode two. So for me, I thought that this was another good addition to the Hawkeye episodes. Um, personally for me, I thought the interactions between Hawkeye and and Kate Bishop I thought was pretty in, was pretty good. Uh, there were at least some cool action. I also I thought that this episode kind of gave the suit mafia the suit mafia guys. Um, a little bit more things, especially when they said, when they kept saying, What's up, bro? Come on, hurry up, bro. Let's go, bro. Like, it was just so funny. Um, there are at least some cool action. I would say that the second, the first episode actually has better action and it's actually a little bit better choreographed. And another thing that you gotta mention in that, uh, and this is something I should have mentioned in the first episode too, is that as when when um clint was ronin he made a lot of enemies along the way he killed a lot of people but he also made a lot of enemies and the suit mafia is also one of them and i'm also wondering how is this how is the echo character going to lead into what hawkeye has been what ronin has been going through so that that's kind of interesting to me um also there were some scenes that i was that, that's kind of developing the story a little bit better, but not fully. Um, the, I feel like it should have been a, li a little bit shorter. It feels a little bit too long to me, but overall, I really did like this episode. I thought it had some very enjoyable moments. Not as good as the first episode, but still a very solid episode of Hawkeye that I cannot wait to watch the next four episodes and to see what it's setting up with this Echo character leading this suit mafia and hopefully, maybe, the fourth episode, we might be we might be seeing um Yelena. Who knows? But I can't wait to see what comes next. So my theory is, um, after seeing the first two episodes of Hawkeye, there's not much I can really say. All I can say is, I'm curious to see what they're gonna do with the Echo character. Obviously, we know that she's gonna be another. She's actually gonna be deaf like Hawkeye is. And she's the leader of the suit mafia thing, uh, which to me is kind of weird because um, we're we're seeing mem we're seeing parts of we're seeing enemies of Clint Bar of Ronan's enemies that we that he made, and so I'm wondering what is how is like is all are all Ronan's enemies like led by Echo? So that's something that's gonna be interesting to me. Like, is someone leading all of these of all these um, guys together? That's something I wanna I wanna know. If Echo is leading all these people that Ronin made to team up to stop him. Um, but overall, that's really all the videos I have. So, yeah. my updated thoughts on phase four right now i just think that every ever since wandavision something has always been exciting for me 
even Eternals and Shang Chi, while they were disappointing, everything that they that they released, I feel like was for me enjoyable and very exciting to go see because it's like it's an MC thing. So you're excited for always. Granted, Loki. It's probably my least one of my least favorite projects of the MCU, but I still did enjoy that. I still did enjoy that show, and um. But now that I think about it, I don't think I was. I don't think I was the, as excited for it as I was with the other shows that, or at least other movies that I watched from the MCU this year. So that's the thing. I love how it's just giving us more stuff, but I'm su super excited for next month how we're actually getting Spider-Man No Way Home. So now that we have, I finally seen the first two episodes of Hawkeye, I could definitely say that I definitely want to see where this series is going. I'm I'm super excited to see where, where the Echo character is going to lead into, if, she, if she's actually going to talk, what are they going to do with that, how is the story going to play out, like, how is Echo going to tie into all of this, when is Yelena going to show up, there's a lot, and is Kingpin going to make an appearance? Probably like in the last episode of the series or something. Who knows what's going to happen? Um, are we going to get a fight between Kate Bishop and Yelena? Who knows? But I'm hoping that we get to see a lot of awesome stuff. And they develop the characters as well as the story well. So, by far, this is actually one of my favorite series of Disney+. Plus. Possibly my favorite. Better than, Yeah, better than WandaVision. Yeah, I would definitely say that. But that's really everything I have to say about the first two episodes of Walk of Hawkeye. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. My Instagram is Marvel6. My TikTok name is Rollin Fan. If you guys don't understand those names, head to my bad section so you can follow me on all social medias. I'm also on Letterboxd. It's the same name as Instagram. Marvel underscore six underscore. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.